Most car companies typically do the same thing. They make cars over a period of time and continue to do so in a normal fashion. Whereas Lotus have been a little bit different. If you know Lotus, they're a sports car company and now making SUVs, but they've also taken the social media game by storm on TikTok. They've changed things in the movie scene. They've been in racing in Formula One for years and now making awesome concepts. So in this video, I'm going to explore Lotus. Lotus Cars Limited began in Norfolk in England, which manufactured sports cars and racing cars, and they were noted for their lightweight and fine handling characteristics. Lotus was previously involved in Formula 1 racing with Team Lotus and winning a Formula 1 championship seven times, which is pretty impressive for a small back garage company. Lotus Cars was founded by Colin Chapman, and after his death, the period of financial instability was brought about by General Motors and, of course, the world financial economics that happened at the time. Now, it was bought by a Chinese multinational, and then, of course, over time in the early 2000s, Lotus kind of died off and stopped making kind of cars at all, and it almost seemed like they were going to go under at one point. But thankfully, that didn't happen, and Lotus has really been changing over the last few years and increased so much of their cars and operations that a lot of the vehicles are looking unreal. Some of the new concepts and current cars are going to be fantastic. Lotus was founded as Lotus Engineering by Colin Chapman and Colin Dare, both graduates of University College of London. And they were really proper petrol heads. They wanted to make something that was super special, aimed at the driver and people who would just love driving cars on track and being fast. And this is kind of what Lotus came about as being special for and known for. Of course, they were unique and probably priced a bit more than your average hot hatchback. So a brief history on some of their cars, because obviously it's a long list, especially before the early year of the 2000s. In 1948, there was the Austin 7 base sports car, and then of course there was the racing cars and Lotus Formula and Formula 1, which dominated as seven championships. And Lotus got really famous for this. They decided to win championships with Sterling Moss and winning in Monaco, and this was where successes came for Jim Clark and a lot of famous racing drivers. But then, of course, they moved on to cars like the Lotus 11 and cars that began to get notoriety for their racetrack setup and Formula One look. Then there was cars like the Lotus Elite, the Lotus Elan in 1970s, and the Lotus Europa, which were all special sports and classic cars that we consider today. Now, you could say at this point, Lotus was doing pretty well, but by 1980, there were financial troubles and the death of Colin Chapman, which really didn't help the brand. Group Lotus was in serious financial trouble and production had dropped from 1,200 units to a pretty mere 383. The reasons for this were due to economic recession and key sales targets that were just never hit in America. Chapman coming to an agreement at this point to help Toyota, such as Toyota Supra, the Celica. They would also provide components and help with development for other brands because at this point they were struggling and they needed more assistance. I won't bore you too much with the details, but essentially Lotus became a company that was almost bankrupt and thankfully was purchased by British car auctions and was therefore sold on consistently over the next 10 years. The company was bought by GM for £30 million and in this time they were also gaining notoriety such as the Queen's Award for Enter. From the 80s to 90s, Lotus were really doing well in Formula 1 and were still about and being well funded. And there was cars still knocking about, but just not as often and weren't great for British reliability. There was a Lotus Elan, which was a front-wheel drive convertible, which didn't really look that great considering its predecessor. Then there was the Lotus Carlton or Amiga, a tuned version of the Opel Vauxhall Saloon, a really popular car now and expensive. And specifically in the late 90s, the Elise was then brought into conclusion of this time. And it was a very popular car. From 96 till 2022, the Lotus Elite really paved the way for the company. Then, of course, there was the Lotus Exige, a sporty version of the Elise. And then there was the Europa S, the 211 Zero Door sports car, which kind of harked back to the old days. Then there was the Avora, an extremely popular car and model, replacing the Elise in 2010 to 2012, 12 years of production. This came out as a race car, a sports car, an everyday car, and was very competitive in its price for what it offered as well. Up until this point in the video that I want you to pay attention because this is where Lotus made a huge comeback. Obviously over the last 12 years while the Evora was in production there wasn't anything else. This seemed to be the only car that Lotus really focused on. Recently in the early 2020s we've had a load come from Lotus. We've had the Lotus Avija, an all-electric hypercar. No time first for Lotus. 
the Lotus Amira, which was revealed in the 6th of July 2021. An absolutely stunning car. It looks amazing. It's supposed to replace the Evora. Then we've got the electric hyper SUV. It's going to become a competitor for cars like the Urus, the Ferrari Purisang. Only expected that there's going to be more. There's a sedan on all electric four door super saloon, another mid size SUV in 2025, a sports car in 2026 again. All of these cars have suddenly come from out of nowhere, and Lotus has decided that they're going to be a big player in the electric game, especially with the Amira being the last robust engine that they're going to make. And it's the social media and TikTok pages that I wanted to focus on here, which is making me think whether it's kind of changing its approach to everything that we know in traditional marketing. The absurdity and success of Lotus's TikTok page is the brainchild of company social media executive Kaito Lee. Kaito has been at the company for nearly four years, starting as a graduate engineer, but it was only this year he moved into the social media role and shaped Lotus's TikTok page. They're just not normal traditional advertisement, but this has garnered Lotus 2.2 million followers and 52 million likes. To put this into perspective, the Lotus PR team barely have a few hundred thousand on their Twitter page. While Lotus is obviously doing a lot of engineering and development in the background and making these amazing cars, the marketing of the brand is also pushing it to extremes. And while the typical buyer might not be looking at TikTok, it's definitely helping the company. While Lotus have worked with many companies and still continue to provide parts and development, they are extremely, extremely successful, not only in their social media, but also in their development of cars and research and engineering. The Avija to the Amira, awesome looking cars. I think they will sell well going forward and definitely a player to be watched. What do you think of Lotus cars? Don't forget to subscribe if you like car content.